Good morning, good morning to the world from South Georgia, USA. It is April the 27th, yeah. 27th, 2024. We're out here feeding the deer. If you've been keeping up with me, yesterday we turned the goats loose out here with the deer and they have got a large area out here but they haven't they they hung around the gate to get back into their normal place last night but uh one of the goats that we call blaze he's one that was bottle raised and really shouldn't be here he was miraculously survived and has survived all this time that black one there he followed us down here and we're trying to lead the goats on down deeper into the woods and where the water holes are and all but they'll eventually do that by themselves as they get used to this area we've got the donkeys out here the donkeys are very good at protecting the livestock they hate coyotes and other predators and they're very defensive and they can the donkey can take care of themselves they're very very good fighters and they have a very nasty bite and kick and are large but anyway to the my uh, purpose for being out here is to feed the deer but my my first purpose is to go ahead and talk about the kingdom of God and uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Now, the truth of the matter is, and if you get your truth from me, and you think I'm telling you the truth, then I'll tell you the truth as I see it. And the gospel, the good news, that Jesus brought to the earth 2,000, 24 years, somewhere along in there, is that our mortal bodies can be changed into immortal bodies. That's what the crucifixion was all about, and Jesus proved it by raising himself from the dead. And he promised that if we believed him, and if we called on his name, he would impart that immortality to us. The gospel, the Christian message, is extremely simple. I'll tell you the, the simplicity of it. If you call on the name of Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, he'll give you eternal life. That's what his message was. Okay, why why don't why don't more people do it? Why do people not do that? Well, it's human nature to think that you're not going to get anything free. You know the saying, there's no free lunch. Well, there actually is something for free, and that is immortal, eternal life. Oh, let me have a little insect spray, Debbie. This, the, uh... The bugs are biting me down here. We're getting into the buggy season just a little bit, and I'm wearing shorts. There's no free lunch, is the saying, you know. But there is, it's extremely ironic that there is something free, and that which is free, that thing, is the most important thing of all, and that is eternal life. It's free. Well, that goes against what we know about the world. You know, the world, nothing's free. You know, you got to pay. you got to pay the piper, as they say. Pay the government. Pay your taxes. There's nothing free. Well, that's true. There's nothing free on earth except. And that's because the devil controls the earth. Even things that they people say are free are not because they expect you to do things like the, the free the free uh, the free the food stamps and the uh, the free supposedly free things that the government gives you and all that's not really free. The government 
expect something from you in return. And that is, they want you to vote for the party that gave you that free stuff. So, they're taking your freedom to choose who you think ought to run the country. They're, they're trying to do it. They call it buying your vote. So, the government gives you something. They want something in return. And if the devil gives you something, he wants something in return. And that is your soul. The devil wants your soul. And here comes Jesus, Jesus Christ, and he comes along and says, I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to give you something for free. And it's going to cost me, but it's going to be free. But there's only one kicker or one requirement, and that is that you have to believe it. You have to trust. Now, the vast majority, I don't want to say vast majority, but a lot of the, the people that espouse to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ are doing it as a profession, and they're getting something out of it. Well, they're getting a living out of it. They're getting recognition out of it. They're well thought of by men. In the old days, you know, the preacher was invited to dinner at somebody's house every year and got fried chicken. Down here in the south, they got fried chicken and collard greens cornbread. and cornbread. Can't forget the cornbread. And nowadays, it's the same thing. Many of the people that are supposed to be telling you about the free gift that Jesus offered us are complicating it. Well, if you taught the pure, simple gospel, you wouldn't be able to do anything but just say that one thing. Hey, it's free. Take it or leave it. And that is not conducive to a career the churches expect the preacher to be exciting and bring in new members and draw in uh, tithes and, you know, and so the preaching profession is, draws people like that, that want to make a living at it. The gospel is simple. Jesus said, if you believe me, you will... You have passed from death unto life. Your mortal body hasn't passed from death unto life because it's mortal. It's the mortal body, that means a dead body. Or it will be dead. Being born again is what Jesus was talking about as a new creature. Now, apparently, the new creature when the old creature dies, the mortal body will be transformed into some sort of a spiritual body. Jesus himself was a body after he was raised from the dead. He raised himself from the dead. So we might expect that also, a body that will never die, that will never feel pain. It's a free gift. It's so simple. But yet we humans want to make it complicated. We don't believe in free gifts. And we have good reason to because our experience tells us that there's nothing free. Well, God, though, is different. He can give something free. Well, I'll tell you one thing he gave us. It was our existence in the first place. He created us from the dust, from the dirt of the ground. He created the earth. And then he breathed, grabbed up a lump of clay and created us and breathed the spirit of life in us. Well, that was a free gift too. Now, he wants to give us eternal life. He created us as a mortal being. We started out that way. 
As soon as we learned good from evil or understood uh, the notion of sin, we became mortal. That's what the story is about in the Garden of Eden. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, I started talking about how simple it was, but I'm running my mouth pretty long here for something simple. But I'm going to tell you it's simple. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. If you believe that, he will give you eternal life. And then you will be born again. It's called being born again. But then, your new born again spiritual man is still tied to your mortal body. They're going to walk around together. And there's going to be a fight between your spiritual new body, your new uh, born again man, and the old mortal man. And as you progress as a believer, as a Christian, as a born-again believer, then your, your um, born-again new creation will gain mastery over your mortal body. Begin to put away the sin. It will guide you and tell you you don't need to do this and do that. God gave us enough fun things to do without going out there and doing stuff we shouldn't do there's plenty of stuff to do plenty of fun stuff it doesn't mean you have to become a monk you can have a wife you can have a family that's not a sin having other men's wives is a sin God will take care of you. He'll put you with somebody that will be compatible. You might have to wait. I mention that because that's one of the most prevailing sins that's out there. Get out of that. Usually the truth is very simple. The truth is simple. If people are trying to complicate the gospel, it's because they're trying to make a profession of it. <laughs> Let me show you Blaze over here. He's pushing on the wagon. Blaze doesn't have any. Blaze has not got any horns. He's one of those butt-headed billies. He's just got little nubs on the top of his head, but he's rubbing them right now. He still likes to fight, but he's a... This is a miniature goat right here. I had some of these guys years ago, and his that genetics has popped up in him. I don't know if you've noticed Blaze's ears are kind of hanging and cut up a little bit that's because blaze and one of the puppies grew up together and uh the puppy would chew on his ears all right back to what i was saying it's simple don't complicate it you want to know what jesus said read the gospels of matthew mark luke and john in your bible Get a first-hand witness of what he said. He wants you just to believe him, that's all. Some people will and some people don't. Everybody's not going to get it. All right, that's what I got to say about it this morning from South Georgia. A beautiful April day. going to be about 80 Two, I think I heard today. That's pretty pleasant. But 82 is hot too if you're out in the sun. 
Keep the gospel simple. Keep it simple. You want eternal life? You need to ask Jesus to save you. His name, Yeshua, in Hebrew means Savior. Save me, Jesus. All right, this is Gardner Israel signing off.